everybody this is the first video in a series of uh, videos that I'm titling uh, archery journeys um, and the purpose of this uh, project is to document uh, various people's uh, um, journeys with the bow and arrow especially uh, some of the um, older archers out there uh, to get down uh, their thoughts and their memories of uh, their time with the bow and arrow. Uh, let me give uh, Doc a call and uh, see if he's got any uh, plutonium for the DeLorean and we can travel way back uh, oh, 30, 30 plus years ago when I first started. I was a hunter at the time, a young man. I had an interest in hunting, especially deer hunting. And uh, I looked at the archery season as an opportunity to increase my opportunities at being a successful deer hunter. Uh, at the time, I knew nothing. I mean, when I say nothing, I knew nothing about bows and arrows. Uh, um, I stopped at a, a small... Uh, outdoors uh, fishing and hunting supply uh, store and they had some some archery equipment there and I talked to the guy uh, at the at the store and uh, explained to him that I was just getting started out and um, he uh, he helped me out uh, he, he got me hooked up with a uh, entry-level bear uh, compound bow um, by today's standards that bow was very very crude uh, but at the time it was a uh, reasonably priced entry-level compound bow which is what I th thought I needed to get started bow hunting uh, I took that bow home and uh, attempted <laughs> to become a, a good shot with it and uh, uh, never could figure out how to shoot it uh, much past 10 yards uh, accurately um, so uh, a couple of years went by and uh, I struggled with the bow uh, uh, and I was convinced that it was because I didn't buy a good enough bow. Uh, so I uh, saved up my money and I bought a uh, better, uh, matter of fact at the time it was a, a high end uh, compound bow. Um, cost me quite a bit of money at the time. And I took that bow home, and I was convinced that with that bow and uh, the arrows that came with it, that, that I would magically become a uh, good shot with it. Well, you guessed it. <laughs> it, it never really was the bow. It was me. Uh, it was me and my lack of knowledge. Uh, it wasn't the lack of trying. I, I did practice with it and try, uh, but... Uh, uh, even with the new bow, I never became a very good shot with it um, at much past 10, 15 yards. Uh, well, uh, about that time, uh, I was uh, shooting that, that compound bow. I was introduced to a, a fella by the name of uh, Richard Zawacki, and at the time, Richard was shooting a traditional bow, a traditional laminated uh, recurve. Um, again, at the time, I knew nothing about traditional bows, compound bows, or any kind of bow. Well, here was uh, Richard, or as his friends called him, Dick. Um, and he had, like I said, this beautiful exotic wood on the, on the handle, riser area, uh, recurve. And uh, he had the nicest looking uh, cedar shaft arrows uh, all crested and uh, the fletchings all looked great on them uh, and they were all carried in a beautiful uh, leather back quiver that he had so uh, it kind of caught my eye and my interest well uh, Dick was a, a very generous man and uh, very generous with uh, his knowledge and um, 
the same time my brother Carl was getting interested in getting into traditional archery and uh, Carl took the first uh, leap and took the first uh, um, stab at traditional archery and uh, Dick, uh, uh, Dick hooked him up with a bow and some arrows and and gave him some advice and it was a short time after that that I said I want to get into this too. I want to get into this uh, traditional archery. So um, Dick took me under his wing also and helped me out. Um, he hooked me up with a 38-pound uh, North Wind uh, bow. It was a long bow, uh, and um, North Wind bows at the time were made by a local boyer um, by the name of Jerry. And Dick knew Jerry, and uh, he uh, he got me this North Wind bow, and uh, um, I didn't have any arrows to shoot out of it. And I asked Dick, I said, "Would you would you make me up some arrows?" Well, Dick was a he was a Fletcher of arrows, a, a arrowsmith, a maker of arrows, and uh, he said, "Sure, it'll it'll take me about a week to make you up a dozen." Uh, I was he could tell I was anxious to shoot the bow, so. Dick said, "In the meantime, I'm gonna I'm gonna lend you a few of my arrows." Well, um, I took those arrows home and uh, proceeded to uh, miss the target and uh, lose his arrows. Uh, uh, try as I could, or try as I might, uh, um, I looked and looked and looked and. The arrows were were lost. I couldn't find them. I had missed the target and they had buried themselves in the leaves or whatever and I looked and looked. So I said, oh boy, when I go back uh, to pick up my arrow order, um, Dick's not going to be happy. I had lost some of his arrows that he lent me uh, and uh, I'm probably going to have to pay for those arrows also. Well, I went back to Dick's uh, yeah, a little basement archery shop and uh, to pick up my arrows about a week later and uh, I explained to Dick, I said, Dick, I owe you for these arrows, but I also owe you for the ones that you had lent me. I, I, I lost them. I said I didn't hit the target and I, <laughs> I lost the arrows. Well, Dick was a Dick was a very generous man, like I said, and he uh, he kind of just laughed it off and he said, well, those are calling cards. You left your calling card there. So, uh, anyhow, um, now I was a traditional archer. I mean, I'd uh, put the compound away and uh, compound that I never could shoot well. And now I picked up a traditional bow. And um, I, I struggled with that also. I had a hard time with that for a while. Um, and. Uh, my brother Carl and myself would practice, and Dick would advise us, you know, and try to teach us a little bit here and there. And one day he introduced us uh, uh, to some other fellows that belonged to an archery club. Uh, Dick was a member of an archery club, and uh, uh, he asked if, if we were interested in joining that archery club. Well, you bet we were interested. Uh, we. <laughs> You know, it sounded like a pretty good deal, and Dick would be there, and these other guys seemed like pretty good guys. Uh, so we went up and uh, checked out that club. Well, it was the most beautiful place you can imagine. Um, the facilities were all top rate. Uh, um, it had a, not only was it well kept, but it had like a magical feel to it. Uh, you knew you were at a special place when you were there. Um, so we uh, paid up our dues, uh, filled out the paperwork, and joined. Uh, and that was one of the greatest things that we did was join in that club. Um, uh, through that club, um, we got to meet a lot of, a lot of really good archers, um, learn a lot. Um, and I can remember when we first joined, um, we would go up on Wednesday evenings, uh, and we couldn't wait <laughs> for Wednesday to come. Uh, you talk about can't wait for the weekend. Well, we couldn't wait for Wednesdays, Wednesday evenings. 
be a long day at work all day and finally it was time to get out of work and and go to the club and shoot our bows well we would go up there and the place was packed with uh, all sorts of great people and um, some of these guys were really <laughs> were really good shooters uh, and and you know we'd scratch our heads and go how in the world is that person hitting the targets that we can't hit you know um, so um, that's where it began well we uh, we would attend all the all the work parties and the shoots up there and the social functions and and uh, we got to know a lot of people and got to know a lot of people well and made a lot of friends uh, and um, some of those people that I made friends with uh, we would as a group, there was other people that were in the same boat as we were, just starting out with traditional equipment. Uh, and at the time, there wasn't many people shooting traditional equipment. Uh, so there, there really wasn't much uh, out there about it. But uh, through the club here, we, we now got to meet people that were shooting the same equipment we were. And at the same level that we were at, as shooters well uh, we would we would attend local shoots we went to a lot of local uh, uh, sportsmen's clubs would have shoots archery shoots and then we started uh, attending larger um, larger and larger events uh, such as Denton Hills down in Pennsylvania and Warriors Mark um, and wow all of a sudden <laughs> This whole world opened up to us, you know. It's like, wow, um, this is really cool. Uh, so we uh, we continued to hang with these people and learn from them and shoot with them. And uh, we started shooting in uh, what they called a winter league back then. It was a winter traveling archery 3D league. Uh, and um, it was made up of almost exclusively compound shooters uh, and many of them were very high-end shooters and good um, good with their equipment um, and uh, our little group we actually formed two teams we were the only two traditional uh, bow teams in the league and every Sunday morning we would travel around Western New York to a different uh, club and uh, that club would host that week's shoot. And we were shooting for score. Well, um, we had a lot of fun. <laughs> we were out there all kinds of weather shooting and, and having a good time. But uh, the league was not really geared towards a traditional equipment and traditional yardages. So um, we took a lot of ribbing uh, at the time from a lot of, a lot of people, you know, um, about not being able to hit the target real well and our scores and all but gradually we got better and better and uh, we continued with it and uh, finally um, we kind of outgrew that league and uh, we started our own um, in-house league and uh, it was mostly uh, folks uh, shooting traditional equipment. We'd still get together on Sunday mornings and we would still shoot for score. Um, and we had a great time doing it. It was, it was fantastic. Um, we kept it simple. There wasn't a lot of rules. Uh, um, and at the end of uh, the winter, we would uh, all get together and bring a prize. We'd put it out on a table and uh, depending on how your score was in the standings, um, you got to pick a prize, you know, either first, second, third, whatever. And everybody went home with, with a really cool prize. Uh, and, and that was a lot of fun for several years. I uh, was named Dick also. <laughs> uh, Dick Glenna, his name was. And uh, he was probably one of the 
best shots at that time around uh, with a traditional bow. Uh, he was highly uh, involved in competitive archery and he was good at it and he um, was probably one of the um, most knowledgeable people when it came to setting up um, 3D courses. 3D courses uh, at that time were just kind of in the early stages and and Dick was uh, he was really good at setting up a competitive course uh, and I was fortunate uh, at uh, work parties and just through knowing Dick to spend a lot of time helping him uh, uh, set up these courses and um, I learned a lot from from him uh, as far as what makes a good course, a good, uh, not just a safe course, but a good course. And um, I was fortunate, I was very fortunate to, ha to work with him um, and learn from him. Another guy uh, from back then uh, was the work party chairman. Uh, and the work party chairman's uh, role at that time was uh, just to take care of the, the property in general, um, mostly, uh, you know, trimming trails and if a tree came down, cut it up, uh, repairs, maybe building little bridges across creeks and that type of stuff. Well, at that time, uh, the fellow that was the work party chairman was named Tommy, Tommy Quinn. And, uh, uh, through going to all the work parties, uh, my brother and myself uh, got to know Tommy quite well. And Tommy uh, ended up being one of my best friends. Uh, um, he's passed on since, but uh, we had some wonderful adventures <laughs> up there uh, taking care of the property. And um, he, was, he was quite a character. He was very well liked. Uh, um, a little rough on the exterior, but once you got to know him, you knew that he was a really good person. He always, always put the club first. I can't ever remember him doing anything um, that wasn't in the club's best interest. And uh, uh, he was so well liked by everybody that uh, after he passed on, uh, one of the buildings at the club now has his name on it, has a plaque, the Tom Quinn building. Then uh, um, there were some guys that were really good shots. I mean, better shots than uh, the rest of us, that, you know. Um, and uh, that didn't just magically happen. These guys worked at it. They spent a tremendous amount of uh, time and thought uh, behind getting to, to be good shots. Uh, and at the time, I can remember... Uh, um, there, were, there were two guys by the name of John, John W. and John C. And they were some of the better shots at the club with a traditional bow. Uh, also, there was uh, uh, Mark. Uh, and Mark, um, he, uh, he also was a very, very good shot. Um, very nice man. Uh, He's become a friend of mine. Uh, you see him in some of the other videos uh, on this channel. Um, other, other people that I can remember from back then, uh, there was uh, Harry Bossart, uh, who was uh, very active in the club. There was um, uh, Phil Fleck. Phil Fleck uh, became president after... Uh, Dick Glenna, um, like I said, I've made a lot of friends over the years. I don't want to leave anybody out. Um, a lot of these people have become lifelong friends. I have uh, enough memories, good time memories at shoots and different things uh, um, to fill a hundred videos. I mean, uh, and I don't want to leave anybody out. Um, I appreciate everything that I've I've uh, learned from these people and received from these people. 
Um, it's been a great experience um, getting to know them and in general archery has uh, archery and bow hunting and target archery have, uh, have become just a, a huge part of my life and I'm very uh, thankful that uh, way back when <laughs> uh, Dick um, took me under his wing and introduced me. Some of the guys at the club were starting to show up with what they call self bows and that's a primitive bow that's a uh, it's not laminated wood it's just made out of one piece of wood um, and uh, one of the first that I can remember that, that showed up with one was uh, John and John uh, to the best of my knowledge was either the first or one of the first people in the area to make his own self bow well I started looking at these bows and Hey, these things are pretty cool, you know. <laughs> um, and a, a little bit later, if I'm remembering correct, um, a fellow out of Me Michigan uh, uh, attended one of our shoots in the summer, and his name was Gary. And Gary um, taught people, taught like a little seminar thing, how to make a self bowl. Well, things exploded after that. I mean, everybody at the club either was shooting a self bowl or was in the process of learning to make one or had made one. Well, um, about then I said, you know, I, I want to get a, a self bowl. I want to get a self bowl and try that. Uh, I guess this traditional archery isn't isn't enough of a <laughs> uh, uh, challenge I want to challenge myself even further and get myself a self bow right um, well luck would have it that I uh, I won a self bow I won a self bow that John had made and donated to a banquet and now I had a self bow all right uh, uh, so I was able to not only shoot in traditional events but now I was able to participate in primitive archery shoots at, uh, at different black powder rendezvous and such. Um, and we actually started a, a primitive shoot, a primitive only self bow shoot at the club. And uh, that was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Uh, started making... Uh, um, my own arrows, uh, my own primitive arrows, self-knock arrows. Uh, my first attempts at that were 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 pretty bad, <laughs> but I stuck it out. Um, luckily, I had to keep making arrows because I was losing them all the time. So I uh, I uh, eventually got the arrow making down pretty good, and and right now I'm very proud of uh, of my arrows uh, that I craft. Uh, um, I've never made a bow myself. It's on my list. It's on my list of things to do when I retire, which is very shortly. Um, but I now own uh, not only that that bow that John uh, donated that still shoots shoot, shoots well, but um, I have four other self bows that I've acquired from a fella, a local fella uh, by the name of Hole in the Bow Chuck. And uh, he makes a real nice uh, self bow. Um, I have four of them. Like I said, I have one that is a hunting weight, and then I have uh, three that are um, lighter target bows. And uh, that's where I've been at the last few years is uh, shooting the the primitive self bows more and more. Well, that's some uh, memories from my archery journey. Um, I, I, ne I never became an uh, excellent shot. I uh, am probably an average at best shot. Um, spent a lot of hours uh, shooting and practicing and hunting. It's all been worth it. It's been a great experience.